Hello YouTube! Today we're going to be reviewing some accounts, and on today's list we have a Lord of Fear Aspen account. An account that's not commonly seen. Most people you see either scrubs with Eloises that are just starting the game, that's fine, it's okay to be like that, smart. Or you're someone who's going ahead and using a Mockman, that's exciting. Maybe you've got a Sword Flash or maybe a Super Deep in, and you've got some kind of end game team or late game team using like Jara and other crazy stuff like that. Well, not a lot of people use Lord of Fear Aspen as their opening Transcendence hero and their strategy, but it's fun, it's viable, there's a lot of people in the community who do it, especially people who've been in the community for a while and just wanted an interesting way to play. Unfortunately, a lot of the people that do that are active members of the stream, so when you get a noob like this who's trying to do that, well, he's about to get roasted pretty good. We've got ourselves a Tree of Origin 3 B tier Lord of Fear Aspen, and you can see we've even got two tenants for him on Kiramaru and Mockman. That looks quite nice. You'd think, oh, a Transcendence hero with two tenants and an Eloise and a Tix. What could possibly be wrong about this? Well, Look at that, guys. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine carries. Enough carries for an E5. If you guys know anything about pretty much Lord of Fear Aspen, he's got some of the coolest tenants in the game. The guy is sitting on Drake, carry, on Kiramaru, really versatile. Even Amon Ra, if you wanted that. And then the last slot, it's quite nice. It's got Elena in there. It's got Mockman, which is pretty cool. Asmodel's a bit there, but generally a really, really broad and pretty cool selection. Early on, though, Carrie is a bonkers, fantastic, super good hero. And considering this guy opened with Eloise, because that was probably one of his first early heroes, you'd expect him to have Eloise with a carry and a Tix. The guy never built Carrie, and I think that's a first off mistake. Also, he went to go and build Carrie recently, and then was like, ah, oh, I I'm missing a six star dog. Yeah, that's right. He's got 13 food five stars, totally miscounted, which is pretty cringe. But overall, let's go take a look at the actual account itself. Let's let's try and help this guy with his Lord of Fear Aspen, because you guys at home might find something useful. So let's tell him what he's done right. First of all, upgrading the active skill, dead nice. It gives you consistent crowd control, really good ways of increasing your damage as well, because it actually activates the damage from not when your opponent's 40% on their lower health, it becomes 60% on the bottom end of their HP. So that's good. It just gives you a higher opportunity to do more damage and a bit of crit there as well. So actually, a Lord of Fear Aspen, if you're building him as a main hero, you want to go with crit, crit attack. It's very, very good. And you're absolutely right, Diamond. The CC really does help a lot. So this is quite a smart build, but going attack HP incorrect, we want to go with crit, crit attack. Fortunately, though, we can let the guy off. He did only build this Lord of Fear Aspen like recently. Three and one split. This is not good. I find this a little cringe. Three and one split is not the way to go with the Lord of Fear Aspen. You want full resonant gear on this guy if you can. So where is our warrior armor? What the heck? The rest of it's on Mockman. Oh, I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to split your armor around. That's that's cute. Probably not the best thing to do though. And on Kiramari, oh dear, he's got like he's got three and one split, but like the. If I press auto equip and six star armor appears, I'm going to be dead cross because people see three and one split with five star armor and think this is optimal. Look what happens when I add full six star gear. The attack goes up. Guys, five star armor is not as good as six star armor. The only reason three and one split works is because there is no triple bonus when you wear class armor. So six star armor is the highest armor you can get that gives a bonus at number three, 21% attack right here. And then you add this because it gives a bonus to the class, 7% attack plus a further 6% attack because he's a warrior. So don't make that mistake. It's actually way better to have a full set of six star than five star plus a little bit. As well, Eloise. Ah, she's wearing the resonant armor. Nice, you got a glittery golden crown. So straight up, his artifacts are good, right? This account's actually done something really, really smart, which is to get a golden crown, go ahead and get melodic strings. And you might think, wait, glittery crown? I'm imagining he picked up one and then got another from bond chests. Glittery crown's still fine. You still get that added all damage reduction at the early rounds. It's actually just pretty, really, really good. Um, so yeah, this Eloise was clearly your main carry hero early on. Even the B minus says that. Look, control immunity offset. That's not good. Effect of being healed. That is though. So you know what? Solid-ish copy. Ticks here with a C. That's fine. Holy damage is nice. Uh, what have we got here on him? Attack, attack. Holy damage plus speed attack. Okay, that's fine. Uh, with a demon bell, splendid. Okay, so you went 
right into the Demon Bell. That's bold. I would like a Rui Scepter here. Rui Scepter's very nice as an artifact. That said, though, Lord of Fear Aspen, you're right to put the Melodic Streams on him. It's good for damage, gets him those early attacks. And with the Sublimation, the crowd control is already going to be pretty consistent. You don't necessarily need Rui Scepter here. So as a main damage dealer, Lord of Fear Aspen ain't complaining. Um, but Thymon's absolutely right. When you do finally want to start clearing some stuff, Aspen sometimes just wants to wear Rui Scepter. And that's fine because the Receptor does give him consistent crowd control, especially enemies with high levels of control immunity. Receptor, when it's upgraded, increases your ability to bypass control immunity. So that's pretty fun. Uh, if we carry on through here, we've got ourselves Olivia. Oh, dude, he's got Rui's. Yes, yes, let's go. So his hero choices might be really bizarre. But the guy's got the artifact. It's Radiant as well. as a 20% control immunity offset. Hello. This is good. Imagine going into an account review where you look at it and go, oh, what are these heroes? But uh, <laughs> the important choices, sublimation and artifacts, they do be quite nice. Uh, attack HP on the Olivia as well. And you didn't fully upgrade it as well. You were like, I'm stopping at Soulstone 1. That's quite an intelligent move. That's that's quite a high level move. Most people just blindly upgrade to Soulstone 3 without going, do I actually need this to be higher? This is good. And funnily enough, attack HP isn't available as a Celestial Stone. So he was like, all right, what's the lowest I can take this to get attack HP? Bingo, got it. Obviously, he was probably looking for HP, HP or something like that. But that's that's quite good. And then Heart Watcher here, just with HP, HP. That's, again, that's absolutely fine. Nine Star, she's going to support you in broken spaces. Can't complain about that. Also, really funny thing, Nine Star Heart Watcher should be pretty good with an Aspen because he steals attack, Heart Watcher steals attack, Tix steals attack, and Olivia shrinks. You might just find that Heart Watcher is going to survive, like, really, really well. Um, so that's that's pretty good. On top of that, we got a 9-star Rignus. Nice, she's going to give you some control immunity or even energy feed for double active from the Lord of Fear Aspen. You might even set that up next to the ticks for a double burst and let Lord of Fear Aspen just do his own thing. That's cool, too. Might even be running Ignis alongside Eloise for sustain-based waves where you want her to be control immune. And that, that kind of has some counter synergy with the Lord of Fear Aspen, though, because Lord of Fear Aspen is going to be shutting people down and then Eloise is going to be trying to kill them, but she's not going to be doing as many counter attacks. So one thing for moving forwards, you probably might want to get rid of this Eloise. I don't I don't think you actually need Eloise on the account all that much. You probably want to be going with heroes that are a little bit better for Lord of Fear Aspen. As we said, once you get that food for the carry, making her to E5 is going to be smart uh, or just anyone that's going to just help Lord of Fear Aspen be a better hero. Um, I think Rogan could be good here, right? If you're building Lord of Fear Aspen to deal burst, right? He's crit, crit, attack. The guy likes to crit. You could get that crit damage higher with a Rogan in here. That's 25% added crit damage. That might help you to seal the deal. Also, when Lord of Fear Aspen does get a kill, you'll actually see he deals more damage to the rest of the team. So Rogan can help ensure that you do get that kill. Another little trick as well is to combine Lord of Fear Aspen with Drake and then see which opponent Drake is debuffing and actually Aspen will target that person and kill him, right? Anarchy, you said you used Rogan as food early on? What the hell? You fed Rogan? Bro! Oh, he might have been like, hey, community, is Rogan a good first E5? And the community went, no, Rogan's not a good first E5. And he was like, oh, so he's food. <laughs> ah! No, Rogan is a really, really good hero. The enhanced crit damage is fantastic. Obviously, as I said, it's going to give Lord of Fear Aspen that easier chance to kill opponents. Oh boy, please don't tell me you fed Drakes. Where are your Drakes? One. Why'd you have no Drakes? My guy knew to build Heart Watcher, but he didn't build Drake? You've never gotten Drake. Okay, what about chests then? Let's go see. You've got one. Ah, dude, Drake is a tenant for Aspen. The synergy is so good because you can move Lord of Fear Aspen around. He targets the enemy he's in the same slot as. So Drake debuffs the lowest HP. Then all you have to do is pick up Aspen and be like, right, you go in that same slot. And then he goes bonk and smacks them to death and they die. And then everyone else takes damage. It's wonderful, right? It helps Aspen seal the deal. And that's the one weakness of Aspen. He, he's not a hero that hits lots of opponents. The only way you can get him to do that is by focusing them down. 
He has four if you include all three chests. Oh, well, there you go. He's going to be building himself a, a nine-star Drake with one spare. whoop de doo I mean, the thing is, you've got to give it to him. He probably used chests for the... Um, for the Aspen copy or something. Also, he spent a little bit of money, took some time off, so he's lacking some resources from events. Now, we've maxed out Warrior Tech, we've maxed out Mage Tech, Ranger Tech's fine, Assassin doesn't exist. I think that's okay, I don't think I saw any Assassins. Drake's gonna want this, though. And Priest? Okay, you've done a little bit. Oh, but you've done the thing that dum-dums do. Okay, little, little tip for people out there who want to know how to optimize guild tech. I'll show you. Oh, oh, wait, you've already reset this before? Never mind, I'm not going to show you. I thought that was going to be free. Little trick you can do. Focus on the nodes that are going to help your hero the most initially. So, Priest HP, 30%. Now, is Block going to help your Priest? No. Move on, get that to 10. What have we got next? Crit? Well, does your Priest hero need to crit? Well, it's an Olivia. No, get that to 10. Move on. Is speed going to help? No, it's an Olivia. Get that to 10. Move on. Is skill damage going to help? No, it's an Olivia. Get that to 10. Move on. Is speed and attack going to help? No, it's an Olivia. Get that to 10. Move on. And you say Fairy Queen Vessa appreciates those things? d -bot! What Fairy Queen Vessa? That's like saying, bro, chicken tastes good. Eat it to a vegan. The guy doesn't have it, and he doesn't want it. Get out of here. Right. Is HP attack going to help, though? Yes. Yes, it does. And you just quick upgrade everything? No. No, no, no. HP to keep the Olivia alive. You go, boom, 60, then 10, then 10, then 10, then 10, then 10. Then you get to this and go, oh, that's good. You go for 20. And then you look at this, and that's HP skill damage. More HP. Get that up. And then be like, I like defense. Finish your block. And then you tidy things up. In fact, loads of people who are early game don't finish their priest tech when they're only using priests as supports. Obviously, that's going to be different if Fairy Queen Vess is in there as your Transcendence hero, but you just kind of split it smart. You have to think about this Giga Brain style because you don't have a lot of guild coins. Ah, come on, kids. Play game clever. Advanced playing. Fancy brain decisions. Don't be dumb dumb. Obviously, if you are dumb dumb, that's okay too. Get smarter. One problem we've also got with the account, and that's probably become immediately obvious to anyone that's keeping up with what we've been talking about today. We don't have a lot of dark food, not even enough to E5 a carry, and we've also said we want a Drake. This is the major weakness of trying to build a Lord of Fear Aspen as your first Transcendence hero. And I get it a lot. Hey, MK, should I build Lord of Fear Aspen as my first Transcendence hero? Or, hey, MK, should I build Vulcan as my first Transcendence hero? Even people say, hey, MK, should I build Asmodel the Dauntless as my first Transcendence hero? If you look in the Celestial Island, go to the Cloud Island, and with your wonderful eyeballs, go ahead and have a look and think about building someone as a homeowner. And you see, Dark Hero, Dark Hero, Dark Hero, Dark Hero, maybe Shadow if you went with Onkiramaru, but lots of Dark Heroes. Where are you going to get those Dark Heroes from? Well, you got two options. It's either in the adventure mode, always go ahead and pick up Dark Six stars, not nine stars like this one, although Dagon's Abyss, very good. We like dark nine stars, we like them a lot. But if you can get yourself a dark six star, you can use that to get more dark food. Good, right? Although that's not the option here. That's what I would recommend though. If on the other hand, you don't have a lot of dark food, it's kind of difficult to pull off a Lord of Fear Aspen because you're not gonna be able to get all the fodder to build those tenants, which means he's not gonna do as much damage and, I mean, just look at this Lord of Fear Aspen. He's got one million attack. One million attack was very, very impressive in 2021. It's now 2023. We have the Treasure Train. We have Tree of Origin Improvements. We have tenants that can buff things ridiculously high. Flags are included in that as well. It's not hard to get a hero to two million attack. I, I, I don't think we've got ourselves some good tenants here, unfortunately. So that's a shame. It really is. So I would rather see, obviously, 
more tenants for Aspen, but it's not going to happen. Same thing goes with Vulcan as well. If you guys ever wanted to build a Vulcan, too many light heroes needed. Same with Asmodee the Dauntless, too many light heroes needed. There are just some heroes that have really awkward stuff. And you might say, hey, but aren't light and dark heroes just like every other faction? No, it's much harder to get food for the light and dark factions. And look at the LFA houses. Wait, please tell me they're high or they're low. What, what are they? Oh, they're only level 30. Oh, at least he's got another level here. That's nice. Look at that. It went up. What about this one? That's gone up as well. So level 33, level 36. It's, it's not that good. It's not the best house I've ever seen. I'll be honest. It's some stats though. But look, the Cloud Island is giving him 124,000 attack. That is, that is not a lot, man. That's, that's really not a lot. So, unfortunately, we got ourselves a few problems. Obviously, though, if we build Carry, we build Drake, that's our two missing tenants. We get Rogan in here for the crit damage. Before you know it, this Lord of Fear Aspen's looking pretty good. The final thing we need to tell this account to do, you got Tree of Origin 3 on Lord of Fear Aspen. Let me introduce you to the glory challenge. If you go ahead and actually build a light and Dark hero to Tree of Origin 3. You get 200,000 spiritual essence. If you go and build a fortress or forest hero to Tree of Origin 3, you get 200,000 more. But you know what's really cool? Once you've claimed this, you can regress the other one and just put it in someone else, regress them, and then go do a Shadow and Abyss hero, regress them, and then you've got enough to go ahead and have a Tree of Origin 5 Lord of Fear Aspen because you got all those spiritual essence. And that's really good really really good so little tip for my friend here if you're gonna go ahead and make this lord of fear aspen a bit stronger the secret to that not just better tenants it's do your glory challenge so one big question on people's minds how many soul symbols has this guy got oh he doesn't you said you just built this lord of fear aspen it, it didn't by any chance consume all your soul symbols, did it? You, d you didn't by any chance have an opportunity to do the glory challenge and totally didn't realize it was a thing and missed the opportunity to kill two birds with one stone, did you? Ah. Well, as Noah has just said in chat, hashtag welcome to the no soul symbol club where many of us reside. One little objective for you then, my friend, is to go ahead and get some soul symbols. Hopefully your profit orb counts quite high so we can get some... Where are your profit orbs? 73? No, scrolls 164? Uh, why? Why do you not save the things, right? The things need to be saved so that we can then do good events and then get the rewards. Easter is literally like right now. And he's like, nah, 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 nah. Got no profit orbs for that. It's, it, it, it be happening, my dude. You don't have the orbs for it. That's a problem. That's a real big problem. Oh, I'm very sad about that. Uh, 2.5 million wood. Uh, yeah, he's got a lot of that stuff. That's because he's never upgraded his first home. <laughs> Not quite sure how he got 2.5 million wood, but yeah, that's it. And uh, check the star spawns. Yeah, well, folks, we will finish today's account review. We've given you a little bit of guidance on how to do Lord of Fear Aspen and stuff just for the early game. By the way, before we before we move on from that, I will recommend going with a Halora is a really good decision as a second Transcendence Hero because she's going to improve the survivability and damage of your Lord of Fear Aspen. Lord of Fear Aspen already has crowd control, so Elena is not as important. Also, Elena, she really starts to shine later on when opponents will crowd control you. When Lord of Fear Aspen shut them down, you don't really need Elena, so Halora is just better. So get Halora as your first edition when it comes to another Transcendence Hero. Then you can consider getting Elena and you'll have double Transcendence Heroes. That's going to be really, really good for Lord of Fear Aspen. Maybe you might want to mix things up and go down a totally different route, delay the Elena. Really up to you, but it will probably be um, probably quite good to get both. But then obviously you can get and throw in other heroes, keep going with Lord of Fear Aspen, make him super strong. You might then pivot into something different. You might want Mockman later down the line. Really up to you, but Lord of Fear Aspen early on, with Scarlet Queen Alora, can't go wrong. Now, let's go look at these star spawns to finish up. What's going to be nice here? Oh! 
Oh, you broke rule one of star spawns. No, 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 no. But did you not get the memo? Oh. Okay, folks. You see this egg with that little bunny rabbit on? That's called a somber egg. That contains two of the best star spawns. The light one that gives holy damage and Trevor, the transcendence one that gives all damage dealt. When you open your first egg, you're guaranteed to get a star spawn from it. So listen up, bozos. Save all your eggs until you get a somber egg. Open the somber egg as your first egg. Guaranteed good star spawn. Unless you're really unlucky and get the dark one. But it's it's a two in three chance. If you don't do that, you end up with stuff like this. And these guys ain't that good. But you know, in time, you'll get all the star spawns. So that's totally fine. It'll only take you absolutely ages. Well done. Well done. Foolish decision. Right, let's go look. Also, chat's like yelling at me. They're like, look at the seal lens. What's wrong with the seal lens? Okay, Dark 22. That's that's not that bad. That Aspen gets stronger. Give him whatever you want to deal damage to these guys. Rui Scepter, Melodic Strings. Hopefully you can cut through this. Obviously, Carry will help a lot. Amon Ra will help a lot. Drake will help a lot. A lot of Dark Heroes will help a lot. So get them in there. Even the Mockman might do something. 22 on Shadow. That could have been higher. I think an LOE should easily be able to achieve Seal on 23. With your Tree of Origin improvements, you might even get higher than that. So yeah, not a fan of that. I think that's quite low. Um, with Ticks as well, that should be relatively okay. Everything else, not really done. So might want to consider getting heroes that can beat this. No rush, but worth considering. Do we have heroes that could beat this? Uh, no, I ain't seen any Olivia Seal Land clears anytime soon. Then again, Olivia with Rogan might do it if the Olivia is tanking on behalf of the Rogan. And I mean, Shrink's going to improve your damage output, so that that could work. Olivia Rogan? Maybe? Oh, well, and you want me to check campaign? He's not beaten a single wave. I mean, we could try. You want to see what Lord of Fear Aspen does against campaign? We'll see. Oh, look, I'll throw in the Phoenix. Look, I, will he beat this? I don't know, man. He's got melodic strings. He's really slow. Uh, he healed, and then he died. He's too slow. So, obviously, you speed him up. But you know you know how you speed him up? Get a speed attack stone. Ah. Uh, 18,000 dust? Oh, that's not good. Well... I'll leave that for you to discover as your final choice. Speed attack, Lord of Fear Aspen. It helps a lot. Or you know what? You want to make him faster? Get him some tenants. Celestial Island improves speed. So a few things to go ahead and focus on. And um, yeah, good luck to you, Anarchy. Your account's a bit weird. But... With the right guidance, the right decisions, and focusing on Lord of Fear Aspen's strengths, allowing him to focus down those opponents early to improve his burst damage will help. Also, join us again for account reviews, and of course, if you guys want to check them out for yourselves, join us on a Tuesday by joining our Discord and keeping your eyes peeled for when we next do these on a Tuesday. So yeah, hit that subscribe button on YouTube to catch more videos like this. I'll see you in the next one, and let me know in the comment section if you are building Lord of Fear Aspen as your first Transcendence Hero. Until next time, though, have a good week, and happy idling.